let me say this. People, people, art does imitate life because let me say this, as an artist, you, your creative process comes from reality. It's not like you can pull something out of your mind that you've never seen before and apply it. No artist have ever done that. At best, you'll fuse things that you've seen and make it into something that people may have not have seen or looked at the same way. But you can't pull something out of thin air that you haven't seen. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I always wanted to make characters that nobody has ever physically seen. But I realized that I could not do that because I've because I don't know what that is. I would have to see something that, that nobody has never seen before for me to even grasp something that's been uniquely done. I mean, be a unique vision. So I understood. So art, people draw things from life, social, uh, social um, situations, politics, religion, everything. Even if we don't want that in our works, even if we don't try, we try to get away from them. We, we can't because they're in our world. They're embedded in our daily lives. We apply that into our works no matter what. I remember with Todd McFarlane. I mean, yeah, Todd McFarlane used to say, he said, you know, nobody should be using politics or anything in their uh, comic books. But you read Spawn, there is politics in there. There's religion in it, obvious religion in there. Even though he's not a believer in God and all that stuff, there's a lot of things in there that contradict exactly what he says. And I'm like, you say there's no room for it, but you can't not keep that away. It's impossible. And at the same time, people are so influenced because people love escapism. They are so influenced by what they see, they end up bringing it over into our reality. They end up, they, they love the world so much that they say, you know what, why can't this be a part of the real world? I can take that and make this a part of the real world. And I'm a creator. And I'm, I'm a creator. And I say this, it's both. Art imitates life and life imitates art for good and bad reasons. For good and bad. There's people who love, like me, I love Superman. So me, I want to be the most moralistic person because he's the perfect idealized superhero and I'm an idealist person. So I want to be just like Superman in terms of morality. Now, other people, they might say Superman is boring. I like villains. And I heard people, they love villains. They think they're a little more interesting. So people may take on traits like the Joker because they love anarchy. I see people dress up as the Joker, talk like the Joker, think like the Joker. Just because, and I'm talking about Heath Ledger's Joker too, especially. Just because they have a connection to something. These things, they're inside of us. But when we see these characters, it pulls something out. We are drawn more to them. And we embrace them. And not only we embrace them, we, we try to apply their attributes into our lives. And we try to have a crossover appeal where we try to take fantasy into reality. And at the same time, we try to take reality into fantasy. Yes, it's, it's a, it, they, they exist in the same paradigm at once, you know, at the same time. But not at all. It's, 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 it's interchangeable. And it, it's, yes, they exist in the same existence. Yeah. They both exist. They both exactly. are there and ever present. Exactly. And I want to say, well, well Dave, I, I know you wanted to really get on this topic. Um, yeah. Chime in if you want to, man. Don't be afraid to speak because um. I know you really wanted to hit this topic. What do you think? Nah, about yeah, I, I was just giving you guys some some uh, leeway because I have, I have a, a, a yeah. lengthy thing to say. Actually, yeah. um, <clears throat> one I've I've, I've told Turn, Terrence this before. Um, monsters to me are literally the perfect metaphor for human beings. Literally, and and I mean that in the sense of our deepest, darkest emotions and flaws, they are those. And an example of that would be H.P. Lovecraft, who, in the beginning of his career, was antisocial, a xenophobic, a racist. Um, 
I would even he he was abused uh, verbally by his mother. And if you look at oh, not to mention he was also an atheist. And if you look at his work, and you look at Cthulhu, that is literally him. Literally, it's him to the point where in his stories there is no God. Only the characters find out that Cthulhu, or the old ones, are their gods, and they're shocked by it. Uh, Lovecraft, at one point, realized how stupid he was, in a, in, a, in, in a sense. He wasn't actually stupid, but he realized he wasn't as smart as he should have been when he came out of the attic of his grandparents' home, um, his aunt's, I meant. And... There's that sense of shock that a lot of his characters have in his stories. So to answer your question, I think it's both, like you said. Exactly. And the, the exactly. scary part about it is the fact that they, they mirror each other. The fact that we can actually look at these works and see how horrible human beings actually can be just by looking at some of the things that's out there. Exactly. Another example of that would be um, look at uh, Frankenstein, or uh, for the people that read the book, Adam. That is literally the questions that, and or the relationship that I'm sure a lot of religious people can relate to between man and his creator. You know, Adam questioned his existence. He questioned his creator. And he wanted a lot of a lot of answers, a lot of questions that never got answered to the point where hey, he wanted revenge. Is there, a, is there an own... actual book called Adam based off of no, the Bible? No, uh, there's Frankenstein. Talking... Oh, I see. Okay. But a lot of people call the monster Frankenstein, but Frankenstein was actually the creator. The, the well, yeah, it yeah, was the doctor, yeah. They, they yeah. just called the monster the creature in the story, yeah. right? Yeah. And he... You know, they either called him the bug or Adam. Um, I like to say Adam because it, it, it reminded me of uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah, um, I got you. I got you. See, I, I, got a little, I got a little confused there. Um, when you said that, I was like, oh, wait. I, I didn't know what you were talking about, but I thought you were talking about the book of Genesis, but now I see what you're talking about, Frankenstein. You're still yeah. on the same subject. Okay. Continue. I'm yeah. sorry. And, and you know, that that, that book to me, was a, the perfect metaphor for, you know, how art imitates life and how we uh, mirror ourselves in these bodies of work. And, I, and, and a review I read of Batman was talking about how uh, Nolan gave references to 9-11 and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, scenes in the, in the movie to the point where, um, or, or, or even the, the Occupy um Occupy uh, Wall Street thing, where where Bing was uh, destroying uh, uh, Wall yeah. Street. Yeah. So it, it's a it's I think it's a big circle. It's one big circle. Yeah. Like I, I'll say this, and it's one of the things that you know that's very powerful about Christopher Nolan's work is that it's very meaningful, very it's current but yet timeless at the same time. And it's hard to do. And he says something about our greatest fears. And the, th the crazy thing about it is it's true. It's all true. Like those things have happened and those things are currently happening. And with Batman, the Dark Knight trilogy, it's just a testament of our current affairs in our world, economic-wise, terroristic-wise. These bad guys, so to speak, they exist. And heck, they manifested themselves into our reality. Not not only people, people like this kid who was doing crazy stuff, shooting up people, people who, who did it in Columbine, they, they heard they did a lot of, they loved fantasy a lot. People who do these horrific things have a fantasy element. They believe in something. They believe that what they're doing is right. 